Uh, the division last year, it could have been written off uh, as a as a tech demo. It was sort of an unknown quantity. You were showing off the tech as much as you were showing off the gameplay. It seems. Uh, yeah. So it seemed like there was a lot of pressure on you guys to sort of either show something that's similar or better. Uh, and what we saw, I think, probably made people feel a lot more. Um, comfortable about what they thought the division was. It seems to be in line with, with what you guys showed last year. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always really uh, challenging to create a, a, a demo for these shows in an open world game that you're you're pushing for, you know, long-term engagement with your players, you're pushing for, you know, uh, uh, investment in the game, and then show us all of that all wrapped in an RPG, you know, shell. Show us all of that in four and a half minutes. So it's, uh, uh, I, I, I love the demo. I think it's a, it does a great job of really hinting at uh, some new gameplay features that we're bringing this year, as well as reinforcing the fact of, you know, uh, this is the game that everyone got excited for, this is the game that we're building, and that's what the, uh, we're, we have remained on track in the, in the last year since you saw us. Awesome. So let's talk about gameplay mechanics. That's, sure. I think, what everyone wants to get into the, okay. the in of. Um, it looks to me like the division is more of an RPG than a shooter. Is that fair to say? Absolutely, absolutely. I would say we're, uh, you know, that's probably one of the bigger misconceptions about the game is that it's a third-person shooter. Uh, you know, we're a Clancy game. Guns are important in in the game. There's, mm. but for us, it's more the categories of guns. So you have pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, marksman rifles, and shotguns. And those are like classifications, uh, kind of archetypes of weapons. Mm. Rather than you know throwing thousands and thousands of guns at you, there's a purpose for the gun choice. And the synergies with the skill choice is the, uh, the RPG angle and the importance of the weapon. Uh, so the character you play as, um, is that the same character for everyone in this game? Are they going to create their own character? Because the sort of the, the, the group of folks that you have uh, seems uh, is it the, is it the same group as you had last yes, year? Yes, yeah. that was on purpose because yeah. we wanted to continue the story. You know, last year it was, dude, check out Manhattan, yeah. and then this year we're in Manhattan with yeah. Megan and Bronson and uh, we, uh, and Player One. Uh, so uh, the but absolutely, character customization and creation is important. I think in RPGs, it's your first connection with your uh, your avatar, your your connection to this world. Mm. And so being able to put your own personal touch, are you male, are you female, skin tone, you know, background, that is important. Okay, so we're looking at the demo here. Yes. Um, let's give you a little oh. tweak there. Uh, we're, yeah, we're, can you just talk us through what's going on here? Maybe talk about some stuff that yeah. we mightn't have seen. So this is, uh, oh, now I'm totally dead. Are we good? Yeah. Sorry, I was eating my mic, guys. No. Uh, so this is what we call Echo. Uh, it's a new investigation tool for the agents. So we're constantly collecting uh, digital information from the environment and at certain locations uh, uh, Echo will be able to create these 3D scenes uh, reconstructing either closed circuit cameras, cell phone conversations, mm. uh, environmental clues and uh, in this case we completed a, a missing persons missions but it could be story elements, could be hidden locations that you don't see that are now clarified so it's, it's our cutscenes, if you will, mm. that work in, a, in an open world multiplayer game. So if you start an echo scene, I can see it, I can get hints or clues from it, and vice versa. And you can sort of engage with it and get XP, or you can just kind of leave it yeah, to the side yeah. and keep and, walking. And you'll need to kind of move through them and hunt. It's not a, something that plays for you. They're frozen moments mm. in time. So here's where we saw another engagement, like uh, similar to what we saw last year. Yes. Uh, but there were some differences. It seems like you guys have leaned into the RPG stuff with uh, having hit numbers and whatnot come yeah, off. Come well, off we had scrolling combat text last year, but it's it's important. I think, uh, especially when you have a game where uh, quality of items and damage types matter and mm. your distances matter, you need to see. Uh, you know the the effect of that. So critical hits, the amount of damage you're doing is displayed out. I want to remind the folks at home if they have any questions at all to send them in at Danny O'Dwyer on Twitter, and I'll make my I'll do my best to try and uh, um, pull them out. And I'll dodge um, them appropriately. <laughs> Can we talk? I want to talk about um, single player. Yeah. This game. Just from an overall view, I feel like some people aren't too sure about where the co-op starts, where the online element starts, and is there a single player part. So can okay. you just give a sort of a basic overview of, of how, the, all the, how the division works when you first put it in your console? Okay. Uh, I mean, the, the division itself is an online game, mm. but it doesn't mean that you are, you're forced to play with other players. Mm. So you could buy the game, play through the entire campaign, take back New York, experience all the content, get to maximum level, and never engage with another human being yeah. if you don't want to. Uh, 
Uh, but the way we set it up, we really want to encourage multiplayer. We, we reward it, obviously, with uh, experience, with currency in the game. It's, we believe the best way to play the game is to play with others. And then if you go into areas where there's player versus player, you're probably going to want to have somebody to have your back a little bit, or okay. you're just kind of fodder. Uh, so when you're walking around in this world, um, uh, is what is the maximum amount of other players that could be in your your game as you're playing? In the open world, it's faced. Uh, so uh, your group is what you'll see. But that, uh, so it's kind of like a uh, an instance in yeah. New York, but it's on a, it's different. But that's a good way to visit to. That's uh, a touchstone that people yes. understand. Yeah. Uh, and but then there's public areas like the last kind of stronghold or foothold we have in the area for the the friendly faction in the game mm. uh, is a public hub okay uh, and then the dark zones that we have in the game are uh, public areas so are there areas like, where you'd be bumping into people you don't know or is this very much an opt-in situation it's opt-in okay. so you'll know when you go into an area where you could potentially run into other players but would, would it be a player that you knew that you were friends with or could it be someone it randomly could be a random oh it could be oh, okay yeah. okay because I think that's, uh, for instance, Watch Dogs, when we first saw that, it looked like uh, the engagements and the hacking stuff might happen sort of a, a little bit less, with a little bit less of your control, but it yeah. actually seems to be much more of a controlled experience. So no. th there is an element of random interaction in the division, but just in specific areas. Yes, yeah. so I think, uh, I'm not sure how fun that might be if you're just kind of, uh, you know, uh, opted in on, but, uh, you know, the game is about choice. We really push that with the map that you saw in the demos with how we uh, kind of uh, encourage you to experience the content in the mm. game. You want it, we don't want to be leading the player around New York. We want that to be a choice. So when you go into an area that those kind of things can happen, you will definitely know and it will be a choice. It's reminding me a bit of Hellgate London, actually, in that really? respect. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That's right. uh, Joel Adam Powley on Twitter is asking, how does the death mechanic work in terms of respawning and losing gear and stuff like that? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, uh, it's something that you know the team and, and we at Massive continue to iterate upon. So respawn mechanics is basically probably what he's asking about, uh, is something that you kind of hone up until the end. Is okay. It, you want death to be punishing. We want it to be punishing in the game, but not too punishing so that it's it's, uh, it, it's it, it, became, it just keeps people from playing, you know, yeah. and what makes them want to drop it. So uh, you definitely respawn in the game, and where we look at where that location is. Um, but details of you know uh, durability loss and all that, we're, yeah. we're, you know, that's still in flux. We're You're still, still iterating yeah, on yeah. that. Okay. Um, Brett Cado asks. Uh, <laughs> Is the car do are all the car doors able to be closed? In? So in yes, that in the every game single car door in, in the gameplay we just showed, there's a part where one of the players runs up and hits it. Like, are you doing this intentionally car now? Car door 2.0. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, uh, our realization director Tobias Newman threw that in there. He's a big fan of that. But yes, we we, we had to have a car door at some point. But no, I mean on a serious note, environmental interactions or environmental uh, animations, if mm. you will. Uh, are important. I think it's uh, uh, great for the game. They're great for immersion. So you will have them. But I, I, I absolutely uh, can say that not every car door in uh, in New York will be <laughs> closable. Uh, this trailer um, you released, uh, is a CG trailers. I'm often not a fan of, but I, I thought this was absolutely incredible. Um, sort of a, a, a you're sort of alluding to earlier as well. This it's sort of a dangerous trailer because for a AAA game, it's actually quite moody understated and and there's not much crazy action going on yeah uh, is is this something that you guys are kind of aware of where you know you're, you're trying to ensure that you get the mainstream you know attention by having a, a game that's that has shooting in it and, and is it has elements of touchstones that people can t mainstream gamers can take but then are you really trying to make something that's particularly not like that is actually a bit more rich and, and moody and in yeah i think uh uh we are an action RPG, so you know there is going to be a lot of fighting and combat in the game. It's it's, uh, but what are you doing that for? What is your connection to uh, what you're saving? Why are you doing this? We want to introduce the, the the agents themselves because, again, that's another challenge with an RPG where you're the hero, but we want the division to be uh, kind of a cognitive thing. People know what it is. Like, what am I? What am I part of? Uh, is so the division? Is it the division itself? Is it a like a sort of a, an uprising, a civilian uprising, or, or not an uprising rather, a civilian, almost like a vigilante group, or it's a it's a it's a federal unit that's been trained for uh, uh, CBRN, which is super non-sexy, but uh, it's <laughs> it's chemical, biological, radioactive, and nuclear training. Uh, 
so to respond to these type of events. So it's a Newton plants a unit that then is activated when this goes down. So it's absolutely not a civilian unit, but they're more civilian in that we're embedded in society yeah. and they're only activated if something like this happens. And so who's, the, who's the primary antagonist in this then? Is it is it groups within the world that well, are trying to take over that, what's left of New York? or That you'll find out when you play. Oh, but, here we go. But, but yes, but, <laughs> but definitely it's uh, there's a lot of factions like you see in the CGI. We introduce a couple like the, the thugs that you'll see a lot, you know, the people taking advantage of uh, of civilians or the sick in the city. And then the last guys, the guys with flamethrowers, the cleaners, is our mm. first kind of real faction introduction. The cleaners? The cleaners. That is terrifying. Yes. That's so absolutely they're, awful. They're roaming New York. They're attracted to levels of high contagion. And uh, uh, they're definitely group oriented. So you're not going to want to take them on when you're running around by yourself. And they're a roaming faction. So mm. you could potentially run into them all over New York. So outside of the campaign, you've said there are PvP areas, there are sort of safe zones where you might run into other players as well. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the, the single player campaign, which can be played, I guess, either on your own or with... Yeah, hopefully the multiplayer campaign. Sorry, the yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So outside of that, the, the, the straight edge campaign, this is what you're doing. Um, is it is it is it quite linear, or are you given a, a wide area of a map and you're sort of left to your own devices? Yeah, you're absolutely given a, a you get a readout, you get a choice. The um, the the map is really really critical uh, in the game. I, we're really pushing, I believe, as much information as you can on the yeah. map, so that it's almost like a menu. What's happening? What do I want to choose? Uh, where do I want to go? Uh, and so, but there is. Uh, New York, it's an RPG, so New York is does have a progression to it. So mm. there might be places that you can go, but you Shouldn't. won't. Uh, yeah, you won't have as much success if you uh, venture there. I'm having absolutely loads of questions, especially from RPG fans. All right, uh, what's up, guys? Queen asked a really good one. Uh, what kinds of things will your character have to watch out for beside enemies? So are you guys leaning into stuff in terms of food, drink, rest, or or items that you might need? Sure, it's a great question. Uh, we. Uh, we get a lot of uh, feedback at Massive on our forums and everything about the survival aspect uh, mm. with the division. And then we know there's a lot of interest for that. Uh, we hear it. We, we, we under, we, we're looking into how we can address that. But for the game itself, what we wanted to do with Food and Water is take that mechanic that's pretty harsh in a lot of other games yeah. uh, and make it a positive. So they're important in the game, food and water and... and uh, uh, resources, but they're only a positive. So if you don't have them, you don't die or starve to death, which is a very punishing mechanic in games. Cool. Uh, last question before you go, Ryan. I want to ask you: uh, the division. It seems like that game, almost like I feel like Watch Dogs was at one stage, uh, which perhaps didn't deliver. And that it's it's one of those games that people think is the the true next gen experience. Yep. Is the division a type of game that uh, could not have been done? on previous uh, generation consoles, and what, what is it about this new level of uh, power that, that allows you to make this game? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. I think that uh, the game could have been done, obviously, on previous uh, uh, generations of, of, of consoles, but nowhere near the level of detail that we can get to, mm. nowhere near the, the animation level, the immersion that we can create for the players. And, and uh, to plug our engine, which is awesome, uh, mm. Uh, the Snowdrop engine, I mean, it's being developed for this game. So things that we need because we need uh, uh, some paint cans that we can do secondary destruction or we need to brush off some snow and have that work, it's same day that can be actually in the game. So that's really what has empowered our, you know, from the artists to the designers to the, to the tech teams to be able to uh, bring the game to this level Excellent. of detail and this scale. Perfect. Ryan Bernard, pleasure as always, Game thank Director you, on The Division. You. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we got so many big games coming up on today's stage. I unfortunately have to go and take a little bit of a break, but Cam Robinson will be back in a second with friggin' Far Cry 4. Stick around here on GameSpot.com.